Muscle contraction begins with an action potential moving down an axon. Depolarization opens calcium channels and calcium ions flow in. The inflow of calcium ions causes synaptic vesicles to fuse with the cell membrane and release acetylcholine into the synapse. The signal comes down and stimulates the synaptic vesicles to release their acetylcholine by exocytosis into the synapse. Dude, this whole thing is a neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine receptors are attached to the motor end plate. So we have acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plate, and when the acetylcholine attaches to the receptors, like so, the protein channels open, and sodium rushes in, and potassium rushes out, <laughs> creating another action potential. After the acetylcholine does its job, it is broken down by the enzyme acetylcholine esterase into acido and choline. This is a whole muscle. It is composed of fascicles. Fascicles are composed of myofibers. A myofiber is surrounded by its cell membrane called the sarcolemma. Mitochondria in myofibers produce ATP, an essential part of the muscle contraction process. The sarcolemma dips in all along the myofiber. These dips are called transverse tubules or T-tubules. They tunnel in from the surface toward the center of each muscle fiber. Myofibers are composed of myofibrils. Each myofibril is encircled by a fluid-filled system of membranous sacs called the sarcoplasm plasmic reticulum. Dilated in sacs of the sarcoplasm reticulum called terminal cisternae butt up against T-tubules from both sides. When the action potential rises at the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it stimulates the release of calcium from the terminal cisternae to the sarcoplasm. The basic functional units of myofibrils are sarcomeres. The sarcomere is a well-organized layer of thick and thin filaments that extends from one Z-disc to another Z-disc. The A-band is a dark region which includes both thick and thin filaments. The I-band is the light region where there are only thin filaments. The H zone is the region where there are only thick filaments. And then the thin filaments are attached to the Z-disc, which anchors them. Myosin heads are attached to thick filaments. This is a thin filament. When calcium is released into the sarcoplasm near the myofilaments, the calcium attaches to the troponin, which causes it to pull on the tropomycin and wrench it off the active site of the actin. The head of the myosin begins in a low energy state. An ATP molecule attaches to it, breaking down into ADP and a phosphate group and releasing its energy to the myosin head. Once the active site on the actin is exposed, the myosin head binds to the actin, forming a cross bridge, and the phosphate breaks free. The myosin head pivots, this is called the power stroke, and pulls the attached actin over the myosin. As the head pivots, the ADP breaks free and the myosin goes from high to low energy. A new ATP molecule then attaches to the myosin, causing it to detach and assume the high energy configuration. The muscle relaxes when no action potential is being sent. The calcium that was released from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum has to be actively pumped back into the SR using ATP energy. The calcium just binds all the calcium and stores it all in its, in its cave of wonders. And it's all just trapped there and now all the calcium is sequestered inside the calcium. The muscle relaxes and we have no more movement until the next action potential comes.